Okay, you're doing question three today. So I just want to put this up to make sure you're okay for when we get started on Friday on question five. Okay, so if sales done, that's fine. There was two little things here that you have to be careful of. Direct labour, it said indirect labour, it included the manager's salary. Now you know a salary is fixed, so the manager's factory supervisor's salary had to come down here. So you have to take 40,000 out of your direct labour and put it in here. Just read the information that they give you. Uh, your selling expenses is normally it's 5%. So again, I'd always have here the total variable cost, but generally I'm using these two figures rather than the big figure here. Uh, if your selling price is 23, and your contribution per unit is 720. Sorry, I just haven't finished your profit. Um, just put that there now. So 161 plus 50 plus 30 plus 40 is 282. And you take it away. And your profit of 150, and I'm just checking, and that's right. Okay, the um, part A, calculate the break even point and margin of safety. I'm not doing that for you, you can do that yourselves. Okay, so um, calculate the number of units that must be sold. Part B is just your formula, fixed cost plus your new profit or over your contribution per unit. I will be doing part C, D and E with you. Um, and I do actually, yeah, the other parts are a little bit scary, so I just turn them off. Okay, so let's look at, I'll do this in blue, just to make sure, right, so in this part, again, you're looking for profit. Okay, and read through it slowly and see what you have. Uh, you're reducing your selling price to 20, so this is going to be 20, so, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, your selling price is 20, so you know your sales commission is 5% of your selling price, which means that's going to be a euro. Okay, um, and it said it would spend an extra 10 on advertising. That means that becomes 292. Why? Because advertising is considered a fixed cost. And it said the units would be 70,000. So all I'm doing at the moment is just spelling in all the information they've given me. And oh, everything else remaining on oh sorry, sales commission would be 6%. So they changed the sales commission and it's going to be 6%, so that's going to be 120. Okay, everything else stayed the same, so the remainder of this stayed the same. Okay, so let's look at it. You have 20 minus your sales commission minus your other variable costs. So the contribution per unit is 415. Sorry, I should have that down, probably another bit. And I want to go to units, so I multiply by 70,000 units this time, because that's the number of units. And that's my fixed cost. Sorry, 290. Oh, I thought it was wrong. So 1,500 is your new upper, uh, profit from this. Okay, sorry, I'm just have to check in something. Your, your solution in your book is actually wrong, so just be careful with that. Your solution in your book forgot to use the information on your supervisor, so use the information that I have here. Okay, part D. Uh, this is the harder one, I think, but if you do it step by step, it should be okay. So again, you want to mark up there you're looking for your selling price. So let's go through everything. A fixed cost increased by 15%. So your fixed costs were 282, and you want to increase them by 15%, which means your fixed costs now are two, three, sorry, three, two, four, three hundred. Okay, uh, the volume of sales remains the same, so you've still 60,000 units. And the company wants to increase net profit by 10% in last year. So you've 150 and you want to increase by 10%. So you want your net profit to be 165. Okay, so and I said everything else stays the same. So your variable costs are still 1465. 
your selling price, which I know, so I'm going to call it X, and your commission is 5% of X, so that's 0 0.05 of X. Okay, and that's all you have there. So we're going to work backwards. So 165,000 plus 324,300 gives you 489,300. But I want to work over here. So I divide by the number of units, and the number of units is 60,000. So my contribution, I'm careful with this, but rounding up, it's 8.16. Okay, now I think the easiest thing here is just to write this down. So what we're looking at, we're looking at this bit here. Okay, so it's x minus 0.05x minus 14.65 is equal to 8.16. That's 0.95x is equal to 8.16 plus 14.65. 0.95x is equal to, so 8.16 plus 14.65 is 22.81. I need x, so I divide by 0.95. And again, make sure you round up. So X, the selling price, is 24, 24 euro and one cent. Okay. Okay, this one here, you're looking for the number of units. And I said before, we'd always fill up on the top what we're looking for. We'd say selling price profit, and then we put down the number of units. But this time we have a problem, we don't know the number of units. So calculating the number of units, you're going to sell them for 25. Okay, and you know your commission is 5% unless they changed it. So your commission is 125. And your other expenses are 1465. Unless they've been changed, okay? And it says you want to provide a profit of 25% of the sales of revenue. So profit is equal to 25% of the sales revenue. And we have a problem because we don't know our sales revenue. Now it doesn't say anything about my fixed costs, so they remain the same. So let's try to fill this in. Okay, so we can, we're being able to work out our contribution per unit is nine euro ten. If I want to go back over here, I need the number of units. So that would be nine ten by the number of units, which is n. Okay, I take this away to get my profit. My profit, problem is, I don't know what my profit is either. So if I want my sales revenue, it'd be 25 euro by the number of units. That's my sales revenue. So my profit is equal to 25%. Now I know my sales revenue is 25N. So you want 25% of 25N. So that's 625N. So now I know what to put in here. Okay, so that's important there. So what you would be doing here then, is you're just gonna write this down as an algebra. Expressions, 9.10N minus 282 is equal to 6.25N. Always with your algebra, let's just one side, numbers to one side. 9.1n minus 6.25n is equal to 282. So 9.1 minus 6.25 is 2.85n is equal to 282,000. You want n, so you divide 282 by 2.85. Now remember you're rounding up here. So it's 98,948 units. Okay, and that's the last part there. Now the other part is a theory question, so I'll do that for you in a minute. So <clears throat> the hardest part here was you didn't know N, but you didn't know your profit. But once you get a formula for N, okay, or a formula for your sales revenue, 25N, you know that your profit is 25% of 25N. Now you might be going, how do I get that? Just get 25% of 25, which is 625 of N.
Okay, I just very quickly did part A for you there because the question is wrong. So there's your break even point. I've done your margin of safety and I've done part B, your target profit uh, or target number of units, sorry, target units. Sorry. Okay, and I just want to do the very last part, which is part F. In part F, it says construct a traditional break even point. Okay. So your break-even point, you'd have here uh, costs and revenue, and here you have the number of units. Now it's just a rough diagram, we're not asking you um, to show it for any unit, particular units. So again, you'd have your fixed cost here, this would be your total cost. And here is your total revenue. Where the two of them meet, that's called your point A, and A is equal to the break even point. Okay, um, it says then show the effect of an increase in sales price would have on the break even chart. Okay, now you get this into your head. They have changed the selling price. So you want to ask yourself, what does that affect? Right, does it affect your costs? No. So your cost curves won't change. If your selling price increases, it means that you're making more money. So what happens is, there's your total revenue curve, and that will shift. Sorry, now I can draw this right here. Okay, so your total revenue curve, you're just going to make more money. Um, so, sorry now. Drawing it on the board is quite hard. So the only thing that I want you to make sure of is that your break-even point is at a lower number of units. Okay, so you need a break-even point. So the total revenue curve just moves up because you're going to make more money from every... You now, the selling price increased, didn't it? Uh, an increase, yeah. If selling price went down, your total revenue curve would move down the way. Okay.